Hi and welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah, I'm here with Knitting Natter to help you knit with ease, confidence and joy. Let's do some feral knitting shall we? Today I have a tutorial for you. We're going to do some feral knitting and just to point out as well that I knit in the English traditional style which means holding the yarn mostly in my right hand but today I'm going to show you how I knit with English traditional knitting by holding the yarn one in my right hand and one in my left hand. I will also show you a second method which you might prefer and which I must say I haven't got on with but if you have different shaped fingers and hands to me then you might actually find it easier. We're all different, we all have different joints, different finger lengths and all sorts of different things um, to do with our hands that means that we knit in different ways and use different styles of knitting and I really do want to emphasise that just because I'm knitting in this way doesn't mean you have to as well. I know a lot of you following me are using the English traditional method so let's go ahead with that. So with Farrell knitting we are using two colours, that's what it's all about. So also called stranded colour knitting and we're knitting with two colours, not three, four, five or six. It's very unusual to get that many. I don't think I've ever seen a pattern with that many colours in one row. But the ideal option if you are a beginner at feral knitting is that you do use just two colours across each row. As you can see here, I already have one series of feral knitting already completed. And we're just switching between denim blue and a lovely bright white. Right, so we've done the border and now what I need to do is pick up the white yarn. We are following a chart, but I'm not going to do it following a chart. I'm just going to show you how I do this rather than show you how you follow a chart at the same time. We need to have the short end of yarn, the end of the yarn sitting at the front. And now I'm going to hold the yarn like this. Okay, so it is wound around my little finger, just like I have in my right hand when I'm holding the other yarn. I'm then going underneath the ring finger, over the next two fingers, and I'm holding the yarn with my thumb and second finger. Some of you may prefer to hold the yarn over the index finger and you hold the yarn and you hold the needle with your thumb and your third finger. I actually find that uncomfortable and this thankfully is actually how I learnt to crochet. I learnt to crochet from a ladybird book. <laughs> the ladybird book of crochet. Very old, very traditional from the 1960s or 70s but I had that and that's what I used to learn to crochet and it used this method. So what I do is hold the yarn here and that is the yarn that I pick up for each stitch. What I'm going to do first is just catch that yarn while I knit the next stitch, which means um, it's going to just sit behind this stitch and I'm not going to see it on the other side. So I go into the front stitch, that's the blue one here, underneath the blue one, move the yarn round with the blue stitch pull the needle back underneath the white and then only pull the blue stitch through. Let me show you that again. So the yarn is sitting here, the short end is nearest the yarn, nearest the current knitting, sorry. I'm going into that blue stitch, underneath the white one, I'm moving the blue yarn round, then I'm moving the needle back underneath and through the white and then here we have the blue stitch coming through and I can drop the original stitch from the row off of the needle. I'm going to right, continue knitting now, I need to do two more blue stitches and then I'm going to knit a white one. So now I'm going to put my needle through the blue stitch and I'm going to pick up that white yarn and use that to make the stitch. Okay. I'm now going to knit one, two, and then on the third stitch, I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I did right at the beginning of the row. That yarn, that needle is going underneath the white yarn. I'm going to use the blue yarn to create the stitch, back underneath the white, 
and pull that stitch through. I will show you what's happened after I've done a couple more stitches. Here. That yarn has now been caught so that it's not hanging loosely across five stitches. We're going to have five stitches in between, sorry, six stitches in between each white stitch. We need to catch it so that it doesn't hang and possibly get caught, end up being too loose or too tight. And just keeping it caught there without it showing on the other side is a really helpful tool when you're using farewell knitting. Sounds complicated, but once you get used to it, it's actually really helpful and feels almost automatic. Take it nice and slowly as you're starting farewell knitting and you'll get used to it one stitch at a time. Okay, we're gonna do this again. Yarn goes around, that's the last blue stitch. Now I'm gonna make a white one again. Into the front stitch, I'm gonna pull the white yarn through there it is, sat between my right, um, my left index and middle finger. If you're using the index finger to pick up the yarn, you may even want to use the continental method where you wrap it around that finger, uh, which may feel easier for you. Like I said, if I use my index finger and I pull it too far away from my thumb, it actually feels uncomfortable. So I don't use that method. But you choose what works best for you. Okay, so I'm picking up that yarn again. And then I've got one, two, now I'm going to catch the white again underneath the white yarn. I'm not using it for a stitch, I'm just moving it underneath. I'm going to move the blue yarn round, pick that blue yarn up and make a stitch with it. And now that white yarn is caught. Make another blue stitch and you'll see that the white yarn there is caught. It's not too tight, it's not too loose, but it's there. Now the other thing you might be noticing is that I'm making sure these stitches are loose, loose enough on the needle so that I can move them. I'm stretching them out on the needle here. They're not all tight up, bunched up towards the end of the needle. If they're bunched up here while I'm making the next stitch, the yarn that is stranding becomes too tight. And once you've gone through the stranded knitting, it actually all bunches up together like this. That was my biggest mistake when I started Farrell knitting. I was holding the stitches tightly together because I was scared of dropping one yarn or the other or not getting it right. So just take your time as you move along the row. Make sure you're moving the stitches apart and it will start to feel easier. Not only that, it will look really nice as well once you finish. So two more blue stitches and then a white one. Okay, now I told you I'd show you another method of stranded knitting. This is quite interesting actually. So you hold both yarns at once, but you hold them both in your right hand and like this. So when you need the blue one, you knit with a blue one. When you need to catch the white one, you can catch the white one. Again, just moving it over the needle instead of round the needle. And this is the really interesting point. It's moving the yarn across the needle in the opposite direction to how you make a stitch. That's how you catch the yarn rather than make the stitch. And then the white yarn goes back over and you don't see it, but it's caught, okay? Now I'm going to knit three more stitches. Then it's time to make a stitch with the white yarn. I can pick that up with my um, index finger and make the stitch with it just as I was with the blue. Okay, and now I pick up the blue again and I knit the color like that. Now I'm going to move the white yarn over the needle blue yarn around, white yarn back around, and I've caught the white yarn but I haven't made a stitch with it. Sounds complicated, once you get used to it, it makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> I'm using a lot of words here and I hope they're not too, <laughs> I hope I'm not confusing you. Right, 
Now I just need to knit to the end of the row. This is when we have some fun. What I want to do here is catch the white yarn again. Because we're going to need that for further along the yarn for the next part of the pattern. If we catch the yarn at the end of the row, it's ready to use here. It's ready to use for this stitch, so I've caught it here. If we keep it only connected to this stitch, it's going to look out of place and stretched when we make this stitch with it on the next row. Okay, this is where the pearl ferrule comes in. As I mentioned last week, if you are used to circle knitting, if you've done a lot of circle knitting, you can start ferrule knitting with circular knitting if you like, and that is knitting in the round. That means you will only be using the knit stitch, so this could be all that you need. However, I really liked the fact that I started ferrule knitting with the knit stitch and the purl stitch. It meant that I have got a much better grounding in knit stitch and purl stitch ferrule knitting. And it means that I can strand from both sides as well. When you're doing ferrule knitting, you also want to keep the main yarn in the same hand as dominant yarn all the way through every single row. If you switch them up, then the tension will be slightly different across different rows. It's not something we recognise very, very much, but it's a really good tip to remember. If you think, oh, I fancy using the white one more this, so I'm going to hold it um, in my right hand and this one in my left hand, the way that the stitches are formed could just show slightly differently and it will look a bit odd. It will look a bit slightly different um, from one stitch to the next. There you go. Look how the stranded yarns have kept going all the way along these rows and feel quite uniform. So I've knitted the border and now we need to move two purl stitches. One, two, three. And I'm using my thumb to make these stitches. If you're used to continental knitting, you may well be more than happy to use your index finger and make the stitches like that. However, I'm more than happy to just sit here, hold the tension in my finger and use my thumb to make the stitch. I've seen a lot of knitters do this as well, it's not just me, and that's all I need to do. Just wind the yarn around the needle with my thumb. There we go. Boom. Sorted. One, two, three, four. If you are stranding more than four stitches, then definitely catch halfway through. Otherwise, that should be fine. And then we can catch, blue, and then a white stitch. There we go. And we just keep on going like this. Just make sure that the stitches are loose enough so the strand doesn't become too tight and catch the stitches too close together. There we go, sorted. And like I showed you before with the, um, with the having the yarns in the same hand, you can do exactly the same thing with the white and the blue, with the main yarn and the contrast yarn in your main hand for the purl stitch as well. So for the moment I'm doing all the way along with blue stitch, then I just pick up the white stitch, white yarn, and switch between them for the next three rows, next three stitches. There we go. And then I drop the white and I pick up the blue. Again, I'm going to catch the white at the end of the row. Let me show you how I do that. It just goes around the yarn, goes around the yarn in the wrong direction. Pick it up and there you go. Make sure it's at the front for the next stitch. And that's been caught in that yarn there. Okay, this may feel like a complicated tutorial. I encourage you to watch it more than once. I encourage you to watch it 
three, four, five times if you want to. Just to come back, do one thing at a time. It'll give you that little bit of extra guidance to pick up feral knitting and have a go. Now, one other option is to not do anything complicated like this. I'm switching between how many different colours and how many different stitches there are between each colour in this pattern. This is a beginner's pattern. It's what I did first when I was fair while knitting. However, if you want to make it even simpler for yourself, just switch between one stitch of one colour, next stitch another colour. One stitch of the main, next stitch contrast. And switch between main and contrast one stitch at a time. That will help you get used to holding the yarn with the different hands or indeed with the same hands and switching between them. It will mean that you just pick it up, means that it, you get used to whether it's too tight or too loose or how you separate the stitches out so that it feels like a great tension. It means that you won't also get caught up in following the color chart, color chart while you're getting used to the color knitting technique. Okay, that's all I have for you today. I hope that's been helpful for you. This, of course, is the pattern from the Baby Hat Trio kit, and you, you can get the Baby Hat Trio digital pattern as well. We're doing that in the knit along right now, but of course, um, right now and in the future, you can also buy them separately without going into the knit along. Right, thank you so much for joining me today. I've had great fun learning feral knitting over the years and doing using it in different ways. I do hope you enjoy your feral knitting adventure too. I will see you again soon. Bye for now. Happy knitting.